completion is complete. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. I was gonna say to the show, but this is Aiden's garage. And this is our creation so far. So the feet and everything are exactly what I want. It is, again, semi-posable. Um, I threw that head on there just for like semantics, cause like, yeah, it's cool. Um, for the head, we'll be going to the, uh, the pumpkin right here. So I'm gonna make a little platform for him and then I'm gonna have something to go around him so it doesn't really get blown off. For the hands, I've got these little pumpkin bombs. Kidding, not actually a bomb, they're just pumpkins. Cause similar to the green goblin, you know, they threw those things around. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them yet. I may put a tiny little face on it later and throw a little LED uh, blinker thing in it. I think I'm gonna do that. Um, but that being said, for today's purposes, I'm gonna make hands and the uh, the forearms for uh, the creature, and I wanna have him hold it out like this. I'm also gonna put like a spike or a bolt or whatever so that when it's in hit the palm, it won't just like fall. So that being said, we're gonna get to work, firm some things up, and uh, we're gonna paint them just primer gray, you know, just color of bone. Um, I was gonna paint them red, but I'm not really gonna have enough time for that, so. Without further ado, let's get to work. I was about to get to work, and I remember I kept this strap, it's garbage, but uh, I was wondering what I could do with that. I have an idea. So my idea ends up being a tail, and I'm thinking like a demon-style tail just hanging down. So the tail is gonna act as ballast, which is great, because I'm gonna have his arms extended outwards, and I'm gonna flip this up this way. And uh, his arms are extend, like, not exactly like this, I had some old springs, well, one giant spring, about 36 inches, lying around, and scrap material, so I'm just going to use that for the ribs. Now we're on to doing the head. So I figure ribs to head. I just have to build a bit of a base and I want to use uh, coat hangers to wrap around it to keep it secure from the wind or someone taking it. I can install the head. And that looks good. A little bit of twist tying and snipping and uh, whatnot. And we have our holder. I'm gonna use hooks so they all hook in together for the, uh, the pumpkin head, which is gonna be fantastic. Easily removable, so I can finish welding it. Uh, I can paint it later. And if I need to change anything, again, I just move it around, get it done. This is good for customizing your uh, your pumpkin skeleton scarecrow. As my skeleton pumpkin skeleton thing was getting taller, I had concerns about it being, or holding itself up. So I widened the legs, widened the toes, and made everything flat footed. This helped out a lot to keep it upright and steady. Now we're going to build the forearms. To do so, we're gonna light up the torch, acetylene, and add the oxygen. And then we're gonna to go to bending the metal for the forearms into place. Now that we've bent all the forearm metal, we will be tacking it, welding it, and then welding it to the structure of the pumpkin skeleton. Now we're going to cut up some piece of metal, 3 8 uh, round bar, in the shape of a hand, weld it together, like tack it, weld it. Flip it over, weld it again, and we're going to do that twice. Once for left, once for right, and at that point, we're going to start bending. You saw the jig? Basically, it's cutoffs 
from round bar, larger round bar. And uh, I stacked them up, put them into uh, a C-clamp, and now I can bend it down using my uh, adjustable wrench. And this is a very easy process. I do it in a two-step. So first you get the subtle bend, and then you get the main bend. My attachment process for the uh, right hand here is to tack it and then come back and weld it both sides. Now we're on to building the left hand. Same thing, same place, same kind of bends, same heating process for the same hand except reverse. Why do welders have such great skin? We moisturize via steam. And we're done. She's looking good. Step back a little bit. That's awesome. I'll test a few things, button a few things up, but she is completely self-sustaining, stands on its own kind of deal. Um, and my scarecrow, jack-o'-lantern, whatever you want to call it, looks amazing. I like it. So, part two is complete. I'm gonna paint it once I get home, you know, all that jazz. Um, I like it. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this device, I am gonna put some bases and panels inside those things. Um, it'll be really cool. Probably did it a little bit later today. And uh, I'll be safe now. Let's build some cool stuff. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. Please. And it literally just collapsed. <laughs> okay, so I guess having a, uh, I wish I got that on film, I just literally shut it off. Um, I guess having it, it's semi-mobile is uh, not good. So we're going to, uh, oh, it snapped. The weld snapped. Oh, well, that, that's because I tacked it. Well, that makes sense. Oh, well, this means I get to fix it. <laughs> So all the way along, I've been tack welding everything until I had it into the finished position. This was one of those areas that uh, had a bit of oversight, and I forgot. So, this is what happens. So this is the second time it's broken. I'm going to walk away for a few minutes. I thought I could just like quick weld it. It's not that big of a deal. <sighs> Anyways, I'll be right back. Sometimes, when you have a complete failure, in this case, two complete failures, it's important to walk away, whether you spend five minutes or 15 minutes, to collect yourself, reassess the situation, and find a better way to do things. Now, my tack welds didn't hold, and they were never meant to. I meant to go back and finish weld it, and that's where my problem was. I forgot. So I went and grabbed the forklift, lifted everything up, made it easy peasy. Now that we're all together, I loosened off the forklift, and I went to testing. Now that it's welded, I'm testing the ability for the unit or the pumpkin skeleton to hold together. After this, I put pressure on it to see if any of the welds would break.